How's it going everybody? Ad Bricker here in the car uh, on a kind of a rainy day. I'm in the parking lot of a church. This church happens to be the location of the ham radio license test uh, that I'm about to take. Yes, I'm getting a ham radio technician level license as long as the test goes well. I, I've been studying for about a week now. Now, I don't really intend on getting a ham radio anytime soon and getting on the airwaves and talking. Uh, so you may be asking yourself, Ed, why are you getting a technician level license for ham radio operators? Well, the answer is my FPV drone equipment. Uh, so DJI drones, you know, they've gone through the process of becoming FCC compliant with their broadcasting and their control with 2.4, 5.8 gigahertz uh, control video transmission. However, a little known fact and one that's glossed over in many ways is that a lot of our FPV quad equipment, like the freestyle and the racing quads, they are generally, generally for the most part, not FCC compliant video transmitters and devices. I've heard a lot of back and forth, but the, the general consensus that I've heard across many different articles and people commenting in different uh, YouTube videos is that the ham radio license technician class level, which is the lowest level of a ham radio license in the United States, uh, is required for, for, for using some of these video transmitters and uh, other types of transmitters that operate in the 5.8 gigahertz. How did I go about studying for this? Uh, I just made a video about my Part 107 certification studying. Um, this time it was a free PDF, essentially. There are question banks you can find online. The actual test is only 35 questions, but there's over 400 questions in the question bank that could appear on the test. So you can find study guides, and the technician level study guide is free. I think it's called the No Nonsense Ham Radio Study Guide or something to that effect. I'll put a link in the video description to it, as well as the question bank, so you can actually look at all the answers to every single question that might appear on this test. The good thing about this test is that you could take it again and again in the same session or, you know, class session and, uh, you know, retry if you fail. So I'm not trying to fail. It's 14. The guy said 14 bucks. Online it says 15 is the average charge for taking this test. I'm going to go in there. I'm a little early. Um, I had to get some cash from the bank and make sure I had some tens and some ones. And uh, I'm hoping to not have to take it more than once. The other cool thing is that a lot of these testing areas will allow you to um, take the next level up. So you got the base level technician uh, class, you have the general mid-level class, and then you have the extra, like as far as you can go in this uh, test taking experience, is the extra class of ham radio licensing. I doubt I can take a cell phone into the testing center. But like I said, this is just at a church in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. All right, stay tuned. All right, I just got home from taking the test, and I passed. In fact, I passed with 100% correct answers, which is not what I was expecting, but I'm happy. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. So a little bit about the test. It was a multiple choice, uh, four possible answers, answers per question, 35 questions on the technician and the general uh, test. So I passed the technician and they said, hey, do you want to try the next one? I said, uh, I haven't studied for it. Uh, so I took it and I failed miserably. So the general is definitely more difficult, different questions, um, just different type of material to study for. Once I finished the technician test, there were five people, three of which went through the answers and kind of signed off as witnesses, and then two other people processed my paperwork. I wasn't expecting five people to be uh, in the room in part of the test taking officiants, you know? When you're talking about the part 107 test, there's one person, and the, the test is computerized, so... It doesn't need more than one person. You're already in the system once they plug you in. Uh, but this time it was all paper and pencil and pen. Blurring this out, but they gave me my certificate of passage and all the different stuff. And then they also gave me complimentary membership to their amateur radio society. So that's fun. The test cost 14 bucks to take. I couldn't take anything in with me uh, except for a calculator, uh, pen and pencil. And I did bring some scratch paper, although they did provide me some as well. 
And that's pretty much it. You're not allowed to have anything else in there. Understandably, they don't want you to cheat. But there were probably like seven other people taking tests right along with me. I was surprised. I wasn't expecting to see so many other people taking the very same technician level test. It's nice to see that there's interest in the hobby, um, even for people like me who aren't really going to be on the radio anytime soon. At least we're getting our proper certifications and our licenses. So for more information about the legality of FPV flying in terms of ham radio license requirements, I'm going to link a few things in the video description. Maybe it'll help clarify some things. Um, again, no one is going to probably end up arresting you or even asking for your FCC certification, but it does feel really nice to be completely certified. And it's, I don't know, it's just like, it's a comfort blanket. And I'm the type of personality where if I need it, if, if there's any sort of legality concern, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it right. And so that's part of this whole licensing uh, adventure for me. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you have questions or comments, comment below. Happy flying. And for you hams out there who are really getting your technician and, and general and extra licenses because you want to operate a ham radio, well, good luck with that too.